Yinj guys, Fish and PA with Ryan Reed. What's up, Yans guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, I want to take some time to break down one of my favorite lakes here in the state of PA, Lake Glendale. Now, Lake Glendale can be found in North Cambria County inside beautiful Prince Glitzen State Park. Lake Glendale has roughly 24 miles of shoreline and 90% of it is wooded. In addition to that, Lake Glendale has roughly 1,600 acres in a max depth of 46 feet. Now Lake Glendale is known for its crappy population primarily, but it also offers you guys a prime spot to go out and fish for largemouth bass, walleye, pike, and the ever so elusive muskie. It also has a very healthy population of panfish like perch and bluegill. Now as an impoundment, Glendale was created by Beaver Run Dam. Also, there are four major tributaries that flow into the lake. That's important because anytime you have tributaries, they relate to fish. So with that said, the four major tributaries flowing into Glendale are as follows. You have Slate Lake, and you have Mud Lake, and you have Kill Buck, and you have Wire Rough Run. So we're going to talk about these four locations a little bit later when we actually get into taking a look at the map. Now, as fishermen, it's important for us to understand features of a lake. And one of the primary features has to do with the bottom of the lake. Now, at Glendale, we have a lot of mud and we have a lot of silt. However, on the eastern side of the lake, there's a lot of riprap. And with that, you have a lot of good rock structure at the bottom of the lake. So when you head to the eastern side, you guys are going to find a lot more rocks outside of that mud and silt, which will also help you locate more fish. Now, Anytime we talk about a lake like this, we got to talk about submerged structure. And there are two primary features in Glendale that will help you guys, again, locate more fish. One of which has to do with submerged road beds. There are a tremendous amount of road beds that create transition lines. You guys locate these road beds, you will find walleye and you'll find bass and other species that relate to those types of structure. In addition to that, anytime you guys have sunken structure, like concrete from a bridge or from a dam, that's also going to attract fish. And Glendale has a few different areas of that lake where there's submerged structure that attract fish. We're going to talk about that a little bit later and hopefully put you guys on those locations. Now again, it's also important for me to state that the shoreline is about 90% wooded. And what that does is it allows for a lot of trees to fall into the lake and it creates timber or wooden structure all around the entire lake, which you guys know is prime habitat for the species of crappie. It also is prime habitat for largemouth bass and for panfish and for pike and a lot of times muskie. So it's important for you guys to look for that timber or that wooded structure around the lake especially early in the season for crappie, but other fish are gonna to relate to those areas all around the lake. One other super important feature that we have to talk about with Glendale is submerged vegetation. Now Glendale has prime weed beds throughout the lake, typically between six and eight feet of water. And as you guys know, game fish relate to weeds and weed edges. So with that said, you're gonna have an opportunity to get yourself on good weed edges and catch a lot of fish out on Glendale Lake. The other really important aspect to weed edges and weed beds is this. Glendale does not have a species of bait fish that schools in open water. So, like shad and allwife, and those types of bait fish you're not gonna find in Glendale Lake. What that means is the game fish primarily eat smaller panfish like perch and crappie and there's also a very healthy golden shiner population. Those types of juvenile fish and golden shiners relate to weeds and weed edges. So whenever you guys find weeds, 
you're going to find more bait fish, which in turn is going to put you guys on more game fish, whether that's walleye, whether it's pike, or bass, or the ever so elusive Mr. Muskie. They're all going to relate to weed edges throughout this lake. All right, so I've given you guys some information regarding Glendale Lake. Now what I'd like to do is jump into the map and check out some hot spots and ultimately provide you guys with more information to find more fish on Lake Glendale. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in to Glendale Lake. So the best way to describe this is when you guys see yellow on the map, it's gonna indicate submerged weeds. When you see orange, it's gonna indicate stumps. When you guys see green, it's gonna indicate fallen timber. And also when you see blue on the map, that's gonna indicate a creek channel. Now I have other items marked on this map, such as fish attractors. So any type of submerged concrete or man-made cribs or man-made reefs, those are all gonna be marked with orange pins. One other thing to mention here is in purple, you're going to see submerged roads or road beds. Those are important because they serve as transition lines. So any of the red pins you see around the map, that's going to indicate a location like Slate Lick or the Old Dam Ruins or Beaver Run Dam or Crooked Run Campground. So they're landmarks. Those are important areas of the lake. So the key here is we're going to talk about each end of the lake. We're going to go over each one of these pins and kind of talk about what they mean to you to hopefully put you guys on more fish. Okay, so we're gonna start on the right side of the lake and we're gonna start with Slate Lake. So what I'd like to do here is just quickly pan up the lake, share some information with you guys, and then we're gonna circle back around and talk about each species of fish and the best areas to find them in particular times of the year. So if we zoom all the way in here, you guys can see the mouth of Slate Lake Run. Now, as we move up, you're gonna see a lot of good submerged weeds and there's also a really good stump field back in Slate Lake Rum. So as we continue to move up the lake, again, there's a lot of submerged weed beds all through this area. We get to this point of the lake, you're gonna see the creek channel starting to come in from Beaver Run Dam. And this actually runs all the way to the mouth of Slate Lake, which I do not have present. However, if you can get in this area and find the channel, that's gonna give you a really solid feature to find fish like walleye. Now one key feature here as we look at the lake is there used to be an old dam here. And what happened is that dam was essentially destroyed and the remnants were left at the bottom of the lake. What does that do for you guys? Well, it serves as structure. And as all of you know, fish love structure. So if you can find the old dam ruins down in Slate Lake, it'll put you on some additional fish like walleye, bass, pike, crappie, all of the above. So it's a good area to do some surveying and it's a really good area to do some vertical jigging. Now all along the shoreline here, you're gonna see really solid weeds and weed edges, as I can see marked in yellow. We also have a good stump field that runs in and out of this as well. So it's a mixture of weeds and timber, which makes Slate Lick a prime location for fish even later on in the summer. Again, Really awesome submerged weed beds about halfway down. And if you follow the creek channel all the way up, you're eventually gonna get to Glendale Dam or Beaver Run Dam. Now, notice here, the creek channel runs all the way through and wraps around the lake. Now, it's impossible for me to give you the exact location using Google Maps or Google Earth. However, you get the rough idea. You find the creek channel, you find deeper water. In addition to this, on the north end of Slate Lick, you actually have a submerged roadbed. So this roadbed comes across the lake here and down into the opening of Slate Lake. On the left side of Slate Lake here, you have a lot of fallen timber, and this is gonna carry all the way around that point and down the lake. Also, up near Glendale Dam, we have some submerged concrete here. Again, submerged structure <laughs> equals fish. So that's a really good area right off of this submerged roadbed, which creates a transition line and then concrete structure. It's a very, very good location to do some fishing. Now, as we work our way around here, we have about seven feet of water along this shoreline and there's some man-made cribs and there's some fish attractors, some man-made reefs. Um, there's also the channel wrapping around 
in a very, very solid weed bed right outside the marina here. So if you guys can get on this at seven to eight feet of water, that weed edge is going to produce pike, it's going to produce musky, and a lot of bass. So again, this is a really solid area for you. As we follow the lake down, the creek channel comes down, and we also have some additional fish attractors here to the left. Now this is a really solid point here, and again, there's some man-made cribs. So in about 12 feet of water here, along this shoreline, you're going to find really good structure. To the right side of the lake here, again, fallen timber, or the potential for fallen timber. That makes really good habitat for crappie. So we're going to kind of walk right into Wire Run, and as we move back here, you're going to notice you have this really awesome submerged roadbed that comes to the mouth and works its way down. That roadbed runs all the way to the back of Wyriff Run. In addition to that, you have a roadbed that comes across Wyriff Run. You have really solid weeds in through here and really solid stump structure right through or around that creek channel. So that's going to give you the opportunity to catch some really big fish that are in that channel especially if you're running your baits in and around that structure that's closer to the channel. Those weeds in there are gonna hold a good number of pike as well as musky. Use the submerged roadbeds as your, again, your transition lines. Anytime you see that, you're gonna find fish there. So as we continue to work our way down here, one really awesome feature is Crooked Run Campground. I personally stay at this campground and it's just, it's an awesome campground. But in that cove, back to Crooked Run, you're gonna find a really solid weed bed and you're gonna find pockets of weeds. And I've moved pike and I've moved musky and I've caught a tremendous amount of bass from the canoe and from shore in that Crooked Run arm of the lake. As you can see here, again, this submerged road bed works its way all the way back into the cove. You have a really solid weed structure in that creek channel. And at the mouth of that cove, you're gonna, again, you're gonna find fallen timber or the opportunity for fallen timber. So that's where those crappies are gonna be early in the season. We're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. As we work our way down, you're gonna notice a really solid stump field here on the right side of the lake. And that's gonna work itself down all the way to the main marina. Again, the creek channel flows all the way down the center of the lake here. And on the left side, you're gonna find really solid weed beds. And you're also gonna find some fish attractors in just sunken structure up and down that left side of the lake. Now the marina, one saying that I've heard frequently, especially in the muskie world, you find the marina, you find the muskies. That's the case in Kentucky, and it's also the case in Pennsylvania. A lot of big fish will hang out around those marinas and in and out of those docks. It's worth poking around in both marinas and throwing some baits through there in order to produce those bigger fish. Now, as we kind of skip down here, notice the creek channel splits off. It's gonna run all the way down to Mudlick and it's gonna branch off around Killbuck. Now, in addition to that submerged road bed that runs right across the lake and down this way to the fallen timber point, you're gonna notice really solid weeds in through Killbuck Run and you're gonna notice really awesome stumps through there as well. So they're in the middle of that stump field and that submerged vegetation, you have the Killbuck Run Creek Channel running right through the middle of it. It just makes for a really solid end of the lake. There's a lot of good structure there and there's a lot of current from that channel. Notice the fish attractors. So again, man-made cribs as we work our way down the lake. Now there is no shortage of weeds in this lake. As you'll notice here, all the way down the mud lake, we again have submerged vegetation wrapping around. We have stumps and we also have the mud lake creek channel coming in, running out to the middle of the lake there. Again, these are just key structure features that'll put you guys on more fish. All right guys, let's take a few minutes and let's break this lake down per species. So we're gonna start with crappy. Now in April and May, you guys know that the crappie are in the shallows and they're gonna be off of shallow weed edges or they're gonna be next to laid down trees or sunken timber. Typically they're gonna be in about three to six feet of water. You guys are gonna to wanna to work fat heads on jigs or some type of plastic, whether that's vertical jigging or on a bobber and you're gonna work that bait up and down those types of structure like weed beds and fallen timber. Now. 
a really awesome spot for crappie early in the season is the upper end of Slate Lake. You're going to find a lot of good weeds here, and you're going to find a really good stump field. There's going to be fallen timber around the shoreline as well that's going to attract fish. So if you guys work this bottom end of Slate Lake, you're going to produce more crappie. However, in the summertime, crappies move deeper. They move to deeper water and deeper structure, typically in about 15 to 25 feet of water. That's where the thermocline is, and that's where you're going to find the fish. So in July and August, look for submerged road beds or old stream channels like the one here in Slate Lake or the upper end of Slate Lake near the dam, you're going to find the submerged road bed. Anytime you can find a submerged road bed, kind of like Route 1027 or these old stream channels, you're going to want a vertical jig minnows and it's going to produce fish. Those crappy move deeper to offshore structure like this and they hold tight to that structure when the water warms up. They're going to stay in that 15 to 25 foot range and that will help you guys catch them out of those locations. Now walleye. Walleye in May and June, you're going to find them in 6 to 8 feet of water typically on weed lines. Now, the eastern shoreline is always good for walleye fishing. However, the upper half of Slate Lick and the upper half of Mud Lick, usually in mornings or evenings, is going to produce a lot more walleyes. So, you have Slate Lick, the upper half, and you have Mud Lick, down here, the upper half. These areas are going to produce the majority of your walleye through May and June, and again, it's typically a night crawler on a harness or a vertical jig rig, and that's going to produce the most amount of fish early in the morning or late in the day. Now, July through September, usually during the day, you're going to find those walleyes in 15 to 20 feet of water, usually on drop-offs. And you're usually going to find those fish all the way up near the dam. My recommendation to you guys for walleye here is at dusk, cast the weed edges, and try to stay around the marina area. So if you're going to float down here in this marina area outside this weed edge right here, that's going to produce walleyes for you, usually around dusk in July through September. Another tip for walleye fishing is to use crankbaits in that perch or that crappy pattern. And as I had mentioned before, there's no shad or allwife in this lake, so the primary forage is going to be those juvenile crappies, those juvenile perch, and those golden shiners. So natural color crankbaits work very, very well on Glendale Lake. Now let's talk about musky. Your best bet to catch a musky on Glendale is between July and August. And the best area you're going to find the fish in is from Crooked Run Campground, so the tail end of Crooked Run here in this cove, and you're going to troll this area all the way up to the dam. Now, you're going to want to find probably that 15 to 25 feet of water range again. And you're going to want to have a large crankbait that's going to dive from 10 to 20 feet down. If you guys control crankbaits that can get to that depth, you have a really good opportunity to catch a muskie when you're trolling up and down from Crooked Run all the way to the dam. You guys can work weed lines with jerk baits or bucktails for muskie as well. And that goes from July to August again. And one of my favorite places on this lake to fish for muskie is Killbuck Run. I just really, really love this cove. It's a, it's a wider cove here. And there's a lot of good weeds in here, as you guys can see. There's a really solid weed bed and you have a mixture of stumps. So with that said, jerk baits again, or bucktails is gonna be prime in this location for Mr. Toothy. And hopefully you guys can get in there and see some fish and move some fish with your baby girls or your meps or any type of bucktail that you guys prefer. Now pike, pike can be an interesting fish on this lake. Bottom line with pike, you find the weeds, you find the fish. Now the upper half of Slate Lick, or if you guys go to Wire of Causeway, or even in Mud Lick, you're gonna find really solid weeds. My recommendation for you guys, if you look at this area, is to again, just find the weed edges Stay in Wyriff, stay in Slate Lake, the upper half, and check out Mud Lake all along there. Find yourself some good weeds and get yourself a really solid jerkbait. I highly recommend Tony Grant's Fat Belly Rattler because it's a hybrid rattle bait versus glide bait. It's perfect for throwing on top of weeds. You can control the water depth, 
So those types of baits will produce pike on those three locations at Glendale Lake. Now lastly, largemouth bass. I would say from mid-June through September, you're going to want to look for weed edges and stumps anywhere from three to eight feet of water. The upper half of Slate Lick, Mud Lick, and Kill Buck are all fantastic for largemouth bass. My recommendation to you guys is spinner baits, spinner baits, spinner baits, and more spinner baits. You guys throw spinner baits in and around that type of weed cover with that timber, you're going to produce largemouth bass. So, looking at Glendale and seeing the features, we have some really solid areas to fish here. You have the streams coming in with really awesome channels throughout the lake. You have great weeds, you have great stumps, you have really awesome fallen timber, and you have sunken structure like submerged road beds, submerged dams, and man-made cribs. It has all the makings to produce a lot of fish year-round. These are the prime reasons why Lake Glendale is my favorite lake in the entire state of Pennsylvania. Now, I can't tell you guys how much I love Lake Glendale. I have a lot of memories of going camping with my family there in addition to spending a tremendous amount of time fishing on the lake. So Lake Glendale is a confidence lake for me. I feel very, very comfortable there. And one of the reasons for that has to do with the water itself. Now the water allows this lake to be very fertile and the water offers a really great fish habitat and also a really good opportunity for weed growth. The water is clean. So it's just genuinely a good solid lake. One other thing I want to talk about though is the thermocline. Between the months of June and September, Glendale has a thermocline and that's typically between 15 and 25 feet of water. That's critically important for you as a fisherman because water temperature means everything. If you guys don't know about thermoclines and you don't understand them, I recommend you do some reading and get out there and learn a little bit more about the thermocline because it'll help you find more fish and ultimately it'll help you catch more fish. All right guys, hopefully I was able to provide you with some good information about Lake Glendale. So if you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you like the content overall, please subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna continue on in this series and try to break down some additional lakes in the state of Pennsylvania which will hopefully prove beneficial for you guys as you continue to fish our area year round. So again, I'd like to thank everybody for their time. I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully you guys can get out on the water soon. Thanks for your time. Oh, I'm about to get the suntan lotion out. Take my shirt off. <clears throat> Just happy you can't see me right now. The camera can't see me because I got a, like a layer of crusted snot under my nose. Everything is frozen. I'm pretty sure my eye, like my eyelids are frozen at this point. Like I can't even blink. <laughs>